The media has already begun discussing the plan for a Ukrainian counterattack. This plan was revealed by a former Ukrainian intelligence officer on local television. I decided to share this plan with you because it seemed to me very plausible and interesting. So, let's look at the map of the occupied territory. We can see that part of the Kherson region is on the right bank of the Dnieper River. Here, Russian troops are fortifying and preparing a bridgehead for a further offensive. They have two main goals. First, they want to capture Mykolaiv and Odessa, two port cities in Ukraine, and thus completely cut off Ukraine from the sea. By the way, there is a large shipyard in Mykolaiv which has built many ships in the Russian army. Actually, the sunken cruiser Moscow was also built in Mykolaiv. For Russians, this city is strategically important. Odessa is also important. It is a large commercial port, comparable to their base in Crimea. The second goal for the Russians is access to Transnistria. This is the Russian-occupied part of Moldova since 1991. Russian troops, about 2,000 soldiers, are there now. The Russians want to link up with them to have direct land access to that territory. If they succeed, in the future they will seek to take over the entirety of Moldova, a former republic of the USSR. Therefore, the occupied part of the Kherson region on the right bank of the Dnieper is now strategically important for Russia. This is a bridgehead, which they have begun to actively strengthen. Sooner or later, they will continue their offensive from here. Proceeding from this, Ukraine's first task is to liquidate this bridgehead and deprive Russia of the opportunity to launch an offensive in the direction of Odessa. For this purpose, Ukraine plans to blow up the two main bridges in Kherson to isolate the Russian grouping there and cut them off from supplies. In fact, Ukraine has already destroyed one bridge and traffic has stopped over it. When the second, the railroad bridge, is destroyed, Ukraine will probably try to carry out a quick offensive operation. For this purpose, forces are now being accumulated and logistics and defenses are being eliminated with the help of HIMARS. Also, subversive guerrilla activity is being carried out in this territory. The task of the Ukrainian army here is simple, to force the Russians to withdraw to the left bank or to defeat all the troops here. At the same time, another grouping of Ukrainian troops will begin to move from the north to the south in the Zaporizhka region. Here the Ukrainians will try to reach the Milky Estuary by bypassing Melitopol. If Ukraine succeeds in liberating Kherson in the entire right bank area, then the main offensive actions will continue here. A very large grouping of the Ukrainian military will conduct the offensive here. The task is also simple to cut the so-called land corridor to Crimea. By the way, this is very important for the Russians. I'll explain why. After Russia annexed Crimea, they tried to cut a land corridor to Crimea to connect the Crimean Peninsula to mainland Russia by rail. But in 2014, they failed to do so. That's why they had to build the Crimean Bridge, to have a land link to it. Now they were able to create such a land corridor and, naturally, they will try their best to maintain it. By the way, they have already managed to connect Russia and Crimea by rail through that land corridor and are building a new highway from Russia to Crimea. But it is also true that Ukrainian partisans have already undermined the railroad tracks here several times. So Ukraine set itself the task of cutting the land corridor and destroying the Russian plan. By doing so, the Ukrainians will cut off Russian troops from supplies from Crimea. But the Ukrainians have another important goal here. The fact is that Crimea has very serious water problems. There used to be a canal that brought water from the Dnieper River to Crimea. But after Russia took Crimea from Ukraine, Ukraine blocked this canal and for the last eight years, the peninsula had very serious problems with water. So serious that it ruined the local agriculture. The entire northern part of Crimea was irrigated with water from the Dnieper. There used to be even rice growing there, but now it's a desert. 
After Russia took over the Kherson region in March of this year, they reopened this canal and started supplying water to Crimea. The canal starts right here in the town of Novokakhova. If Ukraine succeeds in getting this territory back, the water supply to Crimea will be cut off again. Therefore, from Melitopol, the Ukrainian army will move toward Crimea. The remnants of the Russian army will be semi-enclosed here and without supplies. With HIMARS missiles, the Ukrainians will destroy the bridge at the Chongar crossing, leaving the Russians with only one path to retreat to Armyansk. This route will be in the crosshairs of the HIMARS system, so it will be impossible to deliver weapons and ammunition through it. Sooner or later, the Russians will be forced to withdraw to Crimea. Ukraine has two more goals in this offensive liberation operation, to destroy the Crimean bridge and to destroy the Russian military port in Sevastopol. All of this will be possible thanks to the ATACMS missiles that Ukraine will receive from the United States. By the way, Russia has already started to relocate its best ships from Sevastopol to the port of Novorossiysk. Obviously, the Russians understand the risk that this is certain to happen. They have also begun to strengthen the defense of the Crimean bridge. Practice has already shown that Russian S-400 anti-aircraft systems cannot cope with HIMARS missiles. So, Russia risks losing its fleet in Sevastopol completely if it removes its ships in advance. Well, the bridge is practically doomed. The Ukrainians will surely destroy it as it is symbolically important primarily to Putin himself. Next, Ukrainian troops will move from Melitopol eastward to the city of Mariupol. The liberation of Mariupol is a very important goal for Ukraine. It is not only a strategic port and industrial city, but now a symbol of Ukrainian resistance and fighting spirit. During these offensives, the front in the Donbass and other areas will be frozen. Here, Ukraine will have the simple task of holding its defenses and preventing Russian troops from advancing. If Ukraine loses the war, it will effectively cease to exist and be completely absorbed by Russia. It could also push China to attack Taiwan and inspire all authoritarian regimes in the world. Personally, I do not believe in this scenario, but anything is possible. Russia will not abandon its attempts to negotiate with Western European countries to convince them not to supply weapons to Ukraine. Russia will also use blackmail in an attempt to intimidate Western countries. Overall, if the war drags on, Europe might just get tired of the war and press Ukraine to sacrifice its territories and conclude a truce. I know for a fact that Ukraine will not agree to this, but what convinces me most about Ukraine's victory is the iron will of the Ukrainians themselves. They are ready to go all the way to save their country from a Russian takeover. If you agree with me, then please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on new videos.